all very suddenly. I was doing a weekend call and I'd heard about a boy that was in the ICU. He was terrified. I didn't know where I was. Who maybe had seizures. He was having hallucinations. I was freaking out. But had some behavioral issues going on. Was thrashing in bed. You know, I wake up in this huge place. I didn't know where he was. Doctors all around me. I got heartbeat monitors on and everything. He looked terrified. He looked like he thought he was dying. Christopher is a complex and diagnostic dilemma at the beginning. What makes him uh, so interesting is that he presents first psychiatrically often before he presents with any kind of medical markers. One of the key things in NMDA receptor encephalitis is that it's not just seizures, it's not just what we call encephalopathy, but it manifests with florid psychiatric symptoms which are very challenging. I would wake up in the morning, I would look at my dad and his face would change in front of me. His face would morph, it would turn into a totally different guy I could have saw on the street two years ago. So any interpretation needs to be understood in light of the experiences that the psychiatrists have in dealing with these kinds of behaviors. We got the call that neurology had a new patient with suspected at that point anti-NMDA. When we are consulted, we're often asked to comment on what kinds of behaviors that we're observing and how they could relate to a medical diagnosis. I think the biggest thing for me was to make sure that he always knew that he was in a safe place. At Sick Kids, I, I feel that one of the important pillars of care is that of integrating a patient's mental health and physical health. Treating anyone's psychiatric conditions in unison with their medical conditions means we're actually going to see a much more significant improvement in their overall health and well-being. Chris's whole picture was that he had problems with agitation, he wasn't able to speak properly, he was um, seeing things, he had psychosis, and even though um, there's not an EEG pattern that correlates with psychosis. These are very important things to deal with. The Dr. Ye and the neurologist are in charge of treating the underlying condition. Without that treatment, he may not have survived. We're in charge of keeping him safe while he's getting the medical treatment that he needs. With Christopher, he highlights the need for more than one team being involved. He highlights the need for three, four, five services being involved. Uh, he highlights the need for a cohesive uh, collaboration with nursing, with child and youth work, to have open communication with each other, and to continue to keep each other updated on all aspects of care and not just in our own uh, clinical areas. A team-based approach is always conducive to innovation and to improvements in care. Uh, there was no lack of communication here at all. There was an excellent sense of with psychiatry and with neurology, they worked hand in hand, they did very well. One didn't do something without the other one knowing about it. As a nurse on 5C, it's very important for me to hear input from everybody. Mental health is not my first area, so I need like a lot of input and direction from the family, from the social workers, from the dialysis team. The CYCs, the nurses, all of the, the bedside uh, people who are working with him, like OT, speech, and language, those are all areas that were affected. Yeah, I was actually quite honored that uh, when the doctors uh, made their rounds, they actually really listened to what I had to say. If we didn't work together, the whole process would just fall apart. 
having multidisciplinary meetings and bringing the team together, especially to solve a problem. And every time there was a new development, we'd pick up the phone, we'd email, we'd find some way of not just writing in the chart, but of communicating directly. We had such a great team, and I'm just very proud to be a part of the team. Because, you know, if it's done well, this is what's at the other end. <laughs> Are you cold? Are you cold? I'm not, are you? I'm not, are you? <laughs> Is it cold in here? Are you cold in here? <laughs> that's awesome, buddy. What's your name? Good Awesome, that's great. Wait, wait till I show the doctors this. Good job, buddy, excellent. Having an acute or a chronic illness affects your mental health, and conversely, how you adjust to the illness, how you cope with the illness, will make a difference in terms of your adherence to treatment and your overall prognosis. Factors like depression, fatigue, psychosocial problems are often the things that shape kids' lives much more than the actual physical illness. And so um, at our hospital, I think we're very privileged to be able to have multidisciplinary teams, to have access to social work, to child life, to psychiatry, psychologists, social workers. And one of the challenges that we face and what we'd like to build in the future is the ability for families to receive this kind of support everywhere. It's important for him to have support from places like Holland Preview and his family doctor and everyone that's available in the community because this process doesn't end here. The hope is to create a continuum of care for Christopher and other kids like him, and this continuum would go all the way from sick children to the community, to the family doctor, so that there's a net surrounding these kids and that they get treatment as soon as they need it with the team working together, the bigger team of the hospital and the community. What is um, the equivalent to best care possible in each setting that you're in? Here at Sick Kids, we have the opportunity to have the consultation liaison psychiatry service, the medical services, and all the subspecialties available. But um, the standard of care of having psychiatry involved early on or mental health services early on um, really affords the patient the opportunities to have someone um, think of them as a whole person. I honestly don't think I would be here today. 100% I see the value of therapy and what it does. With me, you know, thinking about suicide and all that stuff. It wasn't me, I've never been suicidal before, I've never thought about that. It was the illness taking the effects on my brain and on my health itself. So without, you know, without the mental health and the mental aspect of everything, I don't think I would be here today.